In the last quite peel best CDR video, we will describe how the importance of the face or timing alignment in the 30s to achieve a very low BL rate. In this video, I'm going to show the image of why you need a DL best CDR. Before talking about the DL best CDR, let's go through what the DL is from its top part. The DL is a delay la loop which is like a face la loop, except for the voltage control oscillator is replaced by a voltage control delay line, this deal, for face alignment or adjustment. Since the deal does not generate any clock through a VCO, it must require a reference clock source as its input clock. Then, the delay la loop will compare with the reference phase and adjust the delay between the up clock and the input clock, such that the output clock will align to the input phase, which is the input data here. If the output clock phase is aligned with the transition of the input data, we could apply the recovery class out of phase to sample the input data and recover the data. For a DL, its operation is the same as our negative feedback loops. For example, the phases of both input data and output clock would be compared. If the output clock phase lag, then the charge pump will pump more current into the capacitive loop filter to increase the supply voltage of those inverter based delay lines to reduce the delay, such that the output clock phase will start to advance. Since the output clock phase could be advanced slightly. The phase detector will make the charge pump seek more current to the loop filter slightly and decrease the DCDL's supply voltage to increase its delay slightly. Finally, the phase of the output clock will pull back slightly and finally align with the phase of the input data after a few iterative corrections. After understanding how the operation of a DL's phase alignment is, any idea where the reference clock came from? Think about your PO images for 5 seconds. Bingo! The phase la loop must generate output clock through a multiplication. As we discussed in the white timing or white PO video, the SOC system may not have such a high frequency clock source up to the bit rate, which may need to be generated through a low frequency reference clock and a negative feedback loop, including the feedback frequency divider. As you can see on the left hand side, the output frequency is equal to the n times reference frequency. Simply by adjusting the number of n, all kinds of output frequency or bit rates in a 30 system can be produced if the PLS VCO can produce these frequencies. A complete PL image is shown on the right hand side, and its negative feedback operation will leave for your image homework. Even though the DL based CDR will require a PL to provide the reference clock, multiple CDRs can share a common PL based reference clock generator among multiple channels in a service. So, the service system could only need a single PL. Therefore, the DL based CDR will mitigate the issue of multiple VCO coupling, pooling, high power dispersion a large area of the PO based CDR per channel, which we discussed last time on the right hand side. The topology of the DL based CDR shown on the left hand side is similar to the topology of the PO based CDR on the right hand side. However, the frequency tracking provides a reference clock rather than a control voltage signal. Also, the DL's phase tracking loop 
use the watch control design line VCDO for face synchronization instead of a VCO in the PO base CDR on the right hand side. The reference clock of the VCDO must oscillate at the input data rate and is typically generated from a shear PO base clock multiplication. The benefit of the shear PO will provide low pass filtering of the input reference clock jitter, which reduces the jitter transfer from its reference clock. What else could be the benefit images of the DL based CDR? Think about the jitter accumulation or extra VCO pole images of a PL. Bingo! The extra benefit of using a DL based CDR is that it does not have a jitter accumulation issue of a PL based CDR topology. Also, a DL based CDR provides a more stable system owing to its one pole feedback system. For example, the VCO control voltage directly adjusts the clock phase, but the VCO control voltage adjusts the clock phase by changing its clock frequency. Therefore, the VCO does not introduce an extra pole in the loop transfer function like the PLS two pole system. Furthermore, a DL based CDR provides a faster lock speed than the PL based CDR because there is no need for clock generation. At this moment, let's pause a bit. Do you see any issue with the DL based CDR? Think about the fast capture range image for 5 seconds. Right. The disadvantage of the DL based CDR is its limited phase capture range. For example, it cannot tolerate any frequency offset between the transmitter and receiver. Therefore, the DL based CDR is only suitable for source synchronous C link, such as chip to chip interconnections under the same reference clock. Let's go back and check if there is anything beneficial for you to choose the DL based CDR. Think about the jitter peaking and cascading jitter accumulation for 5 seconds. Yes, to reduce the cascading jitter accumulation, decreasing the jitter peaking in the frequency bounds is a must. The dual loop PL based CDR on the left hand side can have a good input jitter rejection owing to the narrow bandwidth in the fast tracking loop. On the other hand, it can also achieve a short acquisition time from its wide loop bandwidth in the frequency tracking loop. Unfortunately, the PL based CDR with a second or higher order cross loop frequency response needs a cross loop zero to make the loop stable which causes the jitter peaking of its input to output transfer function. In the repeaters applications of cascading several CDRs such as Syncos optical network sonnet, the jitter peaking is unacceptable since the cascade effect will lead to the jitter accumulation. By reducing the PO loop bandwidth, the jitter peaking can be minimized but the equation time is increased. Fortunately, the DL based CDR on the right hand side can achieve the low equation time and jitter peaking at the same time compared to the PL based CDR. For example, the frequency tracking PL will not provide a cross loop zero and jitter peaking. With the combined PL based and DL based CDR, the PO can also maintain a small loop bandwidth without compromised equation speed. In other words, both the DL loop dynamics and the PO performance can be decoupled at the static cost of requiring dual charge pumps and loop filter. Here are a summarized image of why you need the DL based CDR. First, 
the deal best CDR will mitigate the issues of multi VCO, coupling, pooling, high power dispersion, and a large area of the PO based CDR per channel. Second, the benefit of the shared PO in a DL based CDR will provide low pass filtering of the input reference clock jitter, which reduces the jitter transfer from the input reference clock. Third, the extra benefit of using a DL based CDR is that it does not have the jitter accumulation issue of a PO based CDR topology. Fourth, a DL based CDR provides a more stable system owing to its one pole feedback system, which is unlike the PO's two pole system. Fifth, a DL based CDR provides a faster lock speed than the PO based CDR because there is no need for clock generation. Lastly, the combined PO based and DL based CDR on the right hand side can achieve a low acquisition time and jitter peaking at the same time, compared to the PO based CDR. In addition, it can mitigate the limit phase capture range and allow a certain frequency offset between the transmitter and receiver. Thanks for watching. Before you go, if you are benefiting from low circuit images, I would love to hear your feedback and pressure your comments down below. Lastly, please share the video link with the people who may be benefiting from it.